Hello again and welcome to today's Python class. My name is Toby and we'll be taking a look at functions basically. So Python functions. What exactly are functions? Okay. Um so a function in Python is a group of programming statements basically. So it's the idea that we can put statements together and basically create a reusable piece of code, okay, that we can use multiple times. So we can put logic together and make a number of steps basically we like repeating often and we can just group them together and create a single name for all of them and call them together basically so that's what a function is okay and to run the code within a function the function has to be invoked or called basically so we can basically create lots of functions but none of the code within that function is going to run until we invoke it or call it okay um so let's take a look at how we can define a function in python define meaning create okay so we use the def keyword okay so we use the def keyword and then the function name okay to create a function then we can add whatever code we want to add here okay or steps okay so it's going to add a pass for now so what do we have here we have the def keyword which, let, which lets python know that this is a function we have the function name okay so this can be any arbitrary name of your choice any name at all any valid python name that will be valid for your python variable will be valid for your python function name okay and then we are not accepting arguments yet we'll talk about arguments in a bit okay and we basically add the code logic or the statements we want under the code function do take note of the semicolon okay so what we have is that we have indentation of all the code block we want to execute under the function okay and basically we could for example say that we want to um basically print a name multiple times okay so we have a name name is equal to joe okay and we want to print okay so that should be a string and we want to print that is joe okay like maybe um you want to do that um let's say three times okay and let's say for whatever reason basically so this is our code logic these are the steps we want to take basically and then let's say we call this function basically so function name okay so we can call this print name now i guess that would be a better name for our behavior okay so i'm the one choosing the name print name you could choose whatever name you'd want okay and we can basically execute that and we see the output so i've already seen it into the, the right directory you can see the file already that's functions of pi okay so i'm just going to run that okay and you see that that gets executed so what happens python is going to call this function which is going to basically call all the code lines or statements within that function okay that's fine so we didn't really need this yeah so imagine if we wanted to print Joe's name like 10 times basically or let's call that 9 times okay so in the normal execution what you do is that you basically print call this print statement basically 9 times okay but with our function that's not necessary basically so we can just call this 3 times because we've already added the logic to print 3 times so 3 times 3 will be 9 so if we went to print three, 9 times we just call it 3 times basically we call the function print name three times and we get that okay so the true power of functions comes out when we can pass them arguments okay so what are arguments arguments are basically variables okay so um let's share our name okay so we're going to accept an argument called name again okay, it's just going to be like um basically it's a variable that gets defined for that function so within the scope of the function we can assess the variable name because we are receive it as an argument what does that mean so basically we can accept the value of maybe um tom okay and instead of print my name is joe we can use basically format this string okay so what's going on here i'm basically formatting this string to basically replace this variable or this um identifier with the variable name another way of doing string formatting with python would be to use an f string i particularly prefer f strings okay so we just have dropped that in nicely there okay so we do that again so these two lines are equivalent 
which I prefer actually and we can basically run that again again we get my name is Tom basically so we can change this value and we get a different result so we can basically modify the behavior of the function by passing the different arguments without modifying the actual code of the function so um okay let's try that with do okay let me zoom in on that okay and yeah so we see we first of all call it the first time with tom secondly we call it like the second time and get like three outputs for the name do okay so we only had to change the arguments without modifying any of the code of the function okay so this is basically how we would accept arguments okay so arguments are the values while parameters are the variable names okay so when we call tom like this we're basically assigning name the value of tom the string okay and so we can replace that value anywhere or do anything we want with that value okay so it doesn't have to really be a string because python is a dynamic language so as it is now we can't really enforce typing so what we could have done we could have done something like print name 20 okay and that will still execute okay well it's up to us to be conscious of um errors like this okay not really an error in this case but we should just be conscious of stuff like that okay so keyword arguments basically keyword arguments allow us to basically define um values okay by name okay so this can get confusing if we have a lot of values let's say we have a name an age and a nationality okay okay and maybe we want to print my name is then the user's name and then we want to print that his country okay rather his age his age and then his country slash nationality his nationality we just do basically so we're accepting three parameters or three arguments now okay so we can okay, so say his name is tom he could be 25 and he could um basically be from um let's use nigeria so yeah so he's from nigeria so my country is nigeria okay and we can basically run that and we get good output so we're accepting all the arguments as basically um positional arguments basically so tom gets assigned to name based on the order we assign the variables 25 gets assigned to age nationality gets assigned to nigeria okay but what if we want to switch things around because we could have lots of values and things could get complicated so we might not remember the particular order to call variables with so what we could do is actually do something like this okay so age equal 25 still same output or oh, we could change it to 35 okay um name could be peter and um nationality could be um okay i'm thinking it could be from spain okay and we could run that and also we still get what we expect okay so in this case name gets assigned the value peter because we explicitly defined that okay using keywords so name equals to peter age equals to 35 and nationality equals to spain okay so when do we use keywords versus positional arguments depending on when we have a large number of variables or arguments to pass along then that will decide whether to use keyword arguments or positional arguments okay um so we could also define default argument values what does that mean you could specify a default okay so let's say by default we expect people users of our application to be 18 years okay of age okay and we have to put um basically we We have to put this at the end okay so any once we define um defaults we have to put them at the end of the argument list 
okay because that's just basically how fighting works when we work with keywords pushing our arguments and defaults okay and by basically defining a default what that means is that we could leave out this parameter age and we could put this we could leave out the parameter age and we could put the personal argument basically the way we pass it at the end because we switched age to the third argument okay or the second index and we could run this and we wouldn't get any errors if you take note we didn't pass age any value here but we have a default of 18 so okay so we still get the default of 18 for peter who is from spain okay so notice we didn't pass any value here but we get a default value okay so that might seem somewhat useful but then really what we want to do with functions is we want to basically change stuff or run stuff basically and then get output that we can use in the rest of our code that's why it's reusable okay so printing doesn't really help us a lot because it just like display stuff without really returning any value okay so how do we return values to other parts of our program okay because we could assign a is equal to print name okay and we could print a and we basically get none when we print a which means it's empty because the function print name did not return any value it didn't pass back any output for our program to be able to use so print doesn't return back any value or any output that our program can use you can't assess the displayed value of print okay so how do you return a value let's say you want to create a function basically that calculates um the sum of numbers okay so you have a and b basically and it's supposed to just basically add a plus b and somehow get this back to us so you should return this sum to uh um program loop okay or to our program program is okay okay so how do we do that we could basically use the return keyword so return basically is going to pass whatever value we give it back to our program okay so when we call this function we're going to get a return value we're going to see that in a bit okay so we could try this again so in this case b we got the sum of um five and six so a is five and b gets the value of six and we could print b again because we use the value of return we use the key return keyword basically we get a value back so when we now try to assess the variable b and print its value we get 11 as compared with assessing the value a and printing out none which means it's storing nothing okay so that's how you basically return a value from a function okay yeah um so what if we wanted to accept any number of arguments okay so you wanted it that sum can basically add any number of arguments or any number any amount of numbers okay so we use the um basically um we use the arguments identifier which allows us to pass any number of arguments okay of positional arguments to our function so using this we could basically args is going to be a tuple okay so you can print out args when we run this and we could just say um sum is equal to zero and then for i or for number in args sum is equal to plus equal to number basically and we could return sum so this is just like very rudimentary sum an addition function basically okay and then using this we could sum any number of items okay so 10 and 14 okay and we could also do the same but instead we accept maybe two and three okay and you can notice that we can reassign a variable basically we can use the same variable name multiple times in python because it's dynamic okay so the first time we get arguments of a tuple basically that's what arguments is basically here so args or arguments okay equals to 5 6 10 14 which are the number of arguments we pass positional arguments okay and we can just get their sum which is 35 
and then we can sum 2 3 which is the arguments we got when we called or invoked the function with 2 and 3 positional arguments and we return the value 5 okay so that's basically all for using functions in python okay thanks for listening